All right, in this video, I'm going to show you several camera shutter animations are somewhat like a camera. Um, again, I'm not the best graphic designer, but here we go. So if I click on this go button, um, we had this type of animation going on. So we kind of open it up, closing it. Then if I cut this OLAP off, if I tap it now, um, notice the animation is different. Uh, so what we have going on here is a clip to hide these triangles that are animating in here. And that's what this clip is here to show you. So now I got my clip off. So now we can see stuff outside of this circle. Now, if I click go, the reason why I'm calling this one OLAP off, because notice when the triangles animate, they're not overlapping each other. So, I mean, I kind of like that animation, uh, but some of you may want something a little bit different. So I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. And then also I'm going to show you the one with the, let me slide that out of the way. I'm also going to show you the one where the overlap is on. So if we look at this one now, see how the triangles are overlapping each other. And I like this one too, but there's one downside to this. Let me go ahead and show that to you right now. I'm going to come into KLWP real fast. I'm going to set the, let's see here, uh, which one? Okay, duration. I'm going to bump it up and I'm going to make this animate real slow because I want you to see why and I can't figure it out. Let me cut my uh, clip off. Now watch this. So this is the animation that's going on. The only thing I don't like about this and I can't figure it out. Maybe some of you can. Maybe I'm overthinking it. But this top triangle right here. These two here, the way you layer them, um, I would like it, if you notice, what happens is like this triangle right here is going behind, but this triangle here, since it's the last one that I added in when I was creating this, this one's always going to be on top of all these other ones. But if you notice, you have a nice fan going around here, but this one right here jacks it all up. So I wish there was a way that, um, and if you animate it, you can't notice it if it's going real fast, but you may notice this, this part of the animation does not look the same as the rest of it. So notice that one more time. Y'all see what I'm saying? So I want that triangle to go behind that one. But uh, with the way you layer them, you can't do that. <laughs> I don't think. But that's why I had this OLAP off. So if I click on that, now we have a different type of animation going on. Not only that, uh, let me show you something else real quick. I'm going to go into KOWP. And a way I can fix that or make it look somewhat symmetrical, because I'm a symmetric kind of guy, is if I go and I rearrange these things, I'm going to take all my... Let me see, I'm gonna take all my odd ones and line them. Notice I have these things labeled. So I'm gonna take all my odd ones. I'm gonna show you all this in this tutorial, but I just wanna show you things that we're gonna be accomplishing here. So I put up all my odd ones above my even ones like that. Now we're gonna have something that looks a little bit more symmetrical when we do our OLAP on. So let me go ahead and cut that clip and check this out. So now we have something, notice that this looks a little bit more symmetrical because at least we have some of them always being on top of the other ones. I um, mean, if we speed that animation up, it actually looks uh, quite nice. If I cut my clip off, check this out. So notice we kind of have, that looks kind of symmetrical to me compared to the way it was a moment ago where this right side was getting a little bit jacked up. So let's go ahead and look at how to make this stuff in KLWP. I have some uh, information over here to help me out as I'm going through this with you. And we're going to start with a blank preset and what I've done to speed up the video a little bit in this blank preset is um, I'll show you the globals real fast there are over here and we have six globals that we're going to create three of them are number global variables so for those of you new this is for beginners and folks who have been using KLWP for a while just make sure you click on the number global variable and type in height so that's how I'm getting the height. And we're going to repeat this for height, speed, and duration. And for now, when you go to add a number global variable, just let me go ahead and uh, say this. It's going to automatically give you a 0 to 720. We can just leave it like that. Don't even worry about changing that. So make sure you create those three global variables right there. And then we have three more on-off switches. We have a GV Go. Go is going to be this one. It's going to, I'm going to show you the buttons too, but Go is going to trigger the animation. Show clip is going to do exactly what it says. It's either going to show the clip or not show the clip. And then the overlap group, uh, or not overlap group, the overlap is going to change uh, how our triangles move, whether they don't overlap each other when they animate or whether they do overlap each other when they animate. So three on-off switches and three number global variables. Now, what I've done real quick too, just to speed up the video, instead of me going through and creating these, I have an overlap group. I called it Go Button. That's going to be this one in the top right-hand corner. It is a square, nothing fancy. And then the text is nothing fancy for this one either. It just says Go. Um, so 
And then also for this overlap group that I have called Go button, I have its touch set to trigger the global switch Go. So that's going to trigger our animations once we set up everything correctly. Um, the OLAP button, this is going to change whether our triangles are overlapping when they animate whether they overlap or not. Now it's the same square, just make sure you change its touch. You can copy and paste you know, from this button here, except make sure you change the global switch that you're going to toggle. So now we're gonna to toggle the overlap global switch when we tap that button. And also the text, a uh, little bit of coding here for beginning folks. You know, If GV overlap, so if our overlap button is on, if GV overlap, if you don't put equals on or whatever, if you just type it in like that, that's saying if GV overlap is on, then we want to show the words OLAP on. If it's not on, we want to show the words OLAP off. That's, that's your little if then statement. And notice if I come up here and touch this, uh, notice those words are changing because I'm touching it. So I'm cutting overlap on and off just by doing that and we can see uh, what it is. So that's something good for those of you just getting into KOWP, little if then statements right there. And then the clip button, uh, clip not showing, clip showing. So it's still another button over at its touch. I have it set to toggle the show clip on off switch. So now, you know, we've, we've already applied the touches to those three global variables that we have created. And then, um, you know, something here for this if then statement, because I got clip not showing and clip showing. You see that? Well, that little code there is this, if GV show clip, so this means if the show clip is on, that means the clip is showing. Notice I have pressed an enter. I literally pressed an enter after typing in the word clip. That's gonna automatically put it on a new line. And then if GV show clip is off, then we're gonna say clip, I did an enter, and then not, and then I, then I did an enter, and then I did showing. That's a way that you can automatically get clip not showing on three lines, as you can see right there. And then I also set that alignment to center. That way those words are centered up. So, you know, uh, not really important for this video, but I thought I would mention it. Now let's get into the, the good stuff. Okay, let's work on our first triangle. So I'm gonna create an overlap group, and I'm going to call this one. And a lot of this, now, we're going to spend a good chunk of time creating this first triangle, but once we do everything, we, we set it up, we set up the padding and all that stuff correctly, uh, we can copy and paste this and create our other ones rather quickly, uh, changing only a few minimal things. So in number one, overlap group one, I'm going to add a shape, and it's going to be a triangle. And for the sake of this video, I need to position this in the center of the screen, not the triangle. Make sure you position the overlap group that the triangle is sitting inside of. So position in the center. So now we have a tiny triangle there. Well, let's go ahead and make this triangle a lot bigger. Now what we wanna do here, we're gonna create eight triangles and we're gonna make a somewhat of a circle. And if you take 360 degrees divided by eight, you get 45. So. Um, what we want to create here is we want 45 degree angles on our triangle too, and we're going to create an isosceles right triangle. Go to your height for that triangle and set it to GV height. So now we have a long or tall triangle, if you will. And to create an isosceles right triangle, if we go to our width and we do GV height divided by two, GV height divided by two. This will give us an isosceles right triangle. Now, if I go back into my globals, let me show you a few things that we need to do here. If I go back into my globals and I start messing with that number global variable that I've called height, since I've linked it to this triangle, the triangle is gonna be changing, but it's not changing how I want it to. What I want to happen is, is I want this point right here to be in the center of my screen. But yet, whenever I change it, I still want it to be like that. Well, we can do that by using GV height a little bit more. Let me show you that. Whoops, how do I, what did I just do? <laughs> oh, crud. All right, I don't know what happened there, but anyway, I had to restart uh, the visor app. So again, like I said, we want to put this point in the center of our screen. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to this triangle the actual triangle itself. And first of all, we want to do some padding. And that's what I have over here. We wanna set our left padding to height divided by two. So let's go to position. And now bear in mind, I am inside of my triangle now. Let's set the left padding to GV height divided by two. So there's GV height. 
Let's divide it by two. And what this is going to do is move the triangle to the right. So notice the triangle has been shifted over to the right. Now we want to shift it up some by, applied, uh, by applying some bottom padding. And the bottom padding is going to be GV height. Now what this is going to do, you, this might not make much sense, but by us linking in GV height to all these things, that is now in the center of the screen. And that's why I wanted to put this little camera thing in the center of the screen. So check this out. This is pretty cool how we have all these GV heights linked up into the triangle. So if I go and adjust this, notice the triangle is changing, but that center point is still pretty much staying right in the center of the screen. It looks like it's shifting over some. But if I'm not mistaken, it should be staying where it is. And what I did real quick is I just, you know, stopped the video. I went back and, and I didn't change anything with the code. I just saved the preset, went back to the home screen and then opened it back up. And, and now everything is working. So as you can see, I'm changing the triangle. It's maintaining its isosceles right triangle properties. Not only that, that point is staying right there in the center. And to show you that a little bit more, if I come over here to items and I go to that triangle one, but I'm in just, I'm inside my overlap group. If I go to layer and if I rotate this now this originally I was testing this too but originally this will say none for you but if you just go set it to manual real quick and you slide this notice the triangle does rotate around that center point that I was talking about right there so that's exactly what I want to achieve um, and I tell you what I'll just leave that set as manual but make sure it's zero for this first one now let's talk about the animations okay now what I did it again what the heck Oh my gosh, that's going to drive me freaking bonkers. I've lost my train of thought. Anyway, um, what are we doing? We're getting ready to go to animations. Yeah. So animations, and what we want to do here is when we trigger that go button, we want it to do one of two things. Either we want it to do like an overlap animation or not an overlap animation. Well, let's just go ahead and add that animation. And global switch, go, and we want it to scroll. Um, duration, let's go ahead and set all this stuff up. Duration is going to be that GV dur right there. And for our aim, our speed rather, let's go ahead and set that up as GV speed. And trust me, we're doing all this at one time here. When we copy and paste, we don't have to do a lot of this crazy stuff. Now we will have to come and change the angle. Now let me talk about angle with you real quick. If, um, if my overlap is off, I'm going to tie this into the code when we do our angle scroll. But if I set this to 270, that's going to be when I don't want my triangles to overlap when they animate. So an angle of 270 degrees should shoot this triangle straight up. Let's see what happens. As you can see, the triangle did go straight up. That's going to keep it from overlapping with the other triangles. Now, the other triangles that we're going to do, we've got to have them shooting kind of like a star pattern, so to speak, or a burst or fireworks or whatever. So we have to come and adjust this for each triangle. But then if we do want them to overlap, I'm going to set it to 45. Now, watch what this is going to do if I set it to 45 degrees. 45 is going to kind of slide it down and to the right a little bit. All right? So... Um, two things we want to do there. It depends on whether you want your triangles to overlap or not. So what we can do is we can come in here and apply a code to our angle and we can set this code to the following. The angle of scroll is this one right here. This is just for the first one. Now you're going to have to change this for your other triangles, but I'll show you how to do that. So if overlap is on, then we want it to go down and to the right. That's going to be that 45 degree angle mark. If overlap is not on, we want it to shoot straight up. That's what 270 degrees represents. And some other things that we want to do here to go ahead and clean this up, make it look a little bit better. I'm just going to quickly come in here to my triangle. I'm going to, my paint's white. I'm going to go to FX and I'm going to do a vertical gradient and I'm going to let that be just like that. Something else I'm going to do to ensure that when the camera shuts, that it's completely shut and it's not showing anything behind it. I'm going to copy this triangle. I'm going to paste it right inside this overlap group and I'm going to apply some stroke to this triangle that I just copied and pasted. I'm going to set it to about six. I think we should be good there. And I'm going to reverse my paint colors. So now this paint's going to be black. And I'm going to set the FX to a white. Now you can leave it as black if you want to. I mean, that doesn't look too bad, but I'm going to roll with it at this white color. Okay. 
So now there's our first triangle and everything should be good to go. So let's test it out and see. If we press go, since my overlap is off, notice it says overlap off, it should be shooting straight up because I don't want my triangles to overlap. So that's working perfectly. Now if I cut, cut overlap on, now it says overlap on, I'm touching that button, now it should slide this way. Let's find out. Boom, perfect, this is working great. Now we've got the bulk of it done, that's it. What we want to do next is we want to take this overlap group of one, we want to copy, we want to paste, and we're gonna label this one two. So here's what we're getting ready to do. Now you're getting ready to see a pattern right here in a second, so just hang tight. So we're calling this one two. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna to go to layer for our second triangle, and we're gonna set this rotation to 45. Now what that's going to do, well, I, let me just drag it a little bit. See, it's creating this triangle, that triangle we copied, but I wanna set it to 45, so basically, what that's doing is it's moving it right over here beside it. Now what we have to change, nothing with the position, all we have to do is go into our animation and we have to change our angles. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, uh, we want this one to do 45 degrees times two. You'll see this in a second, you'll see a pattern. And we want to do 270 plus 45. All right, now, this might not make much sense, but let's just see, 45 times two. So if overlap is on, we want it to rotate it or shoot it off at an angle of 90 degrees, because 45 times two is 90. I'm putting times two, because we can do a pattern with this. And if overlap is off, then we won't, don't want to shoot it straight up. We want to shoot it up 270 plus 45. So what do we got there, 315? So it's gonna shoot it kind of like up to the right-hand corner of the screen. Let's check this out and see. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna press go. And since overlap is on, let me cut overlap off real quick. That means my triangles are not going to overlap. So we're gonna have this one shoot up, this one should shoot this way. As you can see, that's exactly what's happening. So our triangles are not overlapping anymore, hence the words overlap off. Now if I cut overlap on, this is when they are going to overlap each other, as you can see. Okay, so maybe you're starting to see how this is gonna work once we add more triangles. But everything's good to go right now. Let's just go ahead and copy and paste. And I'm gonna show you the pattern, then I'm gonna start fast forwarding a little bit. So this is gonna be number three. Let's go into its animation. And let's just come down here to our angle. And all we have to do here for number three is change it to 45 times three. And now it's gonna be plus 45 times two. Okay, so that's gonna be, you know, 45 times three is 135, and then 270 plus uh, 45 times two, that's what, 90, that's gonna be 360. And we're gonna come in here and bump these numbers up each time for each triangle. So the next one we're gonna do is be a four and a three, then it'll be a five and a four, et cetera. But now, if we test this out, oops, what did I forget to do? This number three overlap group, we need to come in here to its layer, and we need to rotate it another 45 degrees. So we need to put it up to 90. Now let's test this out. So since overlap's on, as you can see, all of our triangles are overlapping as they animate. If I go to overlap off, they should shoot away from each other. Kind of like a, uh, some fireworks that I was mentioning earlier. Very good, very good. So copy and paste. I'll run through it one more time. Maybe you have the idea, but if not, I'm gonna show it to you. So this is gonna be number four. I tell you what, when we open up number four, let's go ahead and apply another 45 degrees to this. So instead of 90, it's going to be 135. And go to its animation. And all we have to do now for these, the ones that we create from here on out, we go to its angle. We're going to bump this up to four and bump this up to three. And let's test this out. So since overlap is off, as you can see, they're all bursting away from each other, so to speak. And then if I cut my overlap on, we should see overlap going on. But it good. All right, so fast forward time. Um, you might want to slow the video down if you still need a little bit of help with those numbers. But basically, I'm just going to copy and paste, change my rotation, and change those numbers in the angle of my scroll.
And there you go. So if you need to go back and watch that again, just uh, go down to the settings or the little cog in the YouTube bottom right hand corner of the video and slow down the speed if you want to watch me do all those pieces again. But uh, there we go. So now we have our overlap on. So all of our triangles are overlapping. And back at the beginning of the video, this is my number eight triangle. So this one's going to be on top of everything. So that's why that piece there, that animation looks a little bit different. But if we cut overlap off and we check it out, boom. So now they're not touching each other. Okay, and um, before we talk about the clip, let's just go and go to our globals. Let me show you the power of globals again. Suppose you want your camera to be a little bit smaller. And now it might not look right in here at first or it might do it, it did it just fine. See, sometimes the advanced editor does not update this stuff like it should. Now, if I cut OLAP on, check it out. See, by us using the height global variable, uh, we can change the height and we're still maintaining all those center points and rotations and whatever are not rotations, but scrolls. Not only that, if we want this thing to be faster or no, not that speed is going to be how far it moves. So suppose you don't want it to move as far. So speed is like a distance. So if I, I got speed set to 20, it's not going to move a lot. See that? Whereas if I bump the speed up to 100, some of these will probably fly off the screen. Yeah, as you can see there. Okay, so that's what speed does. And duration is going to be how long it lasts. So if you want it to be a real slow animation, um, as you can max this out wherever you want. But I got it set to four. Now watch how slow this is going to be. Four seconds for it to complete that animation. Um, if I adjust the speed down, now watch how slow this is going to be. Because it takes four, 40 for dur duration. Uh, it takes four seconds for it to complete that animation. Now, obviously here, you see how it looks like it's almost rotating, kind of? That's what that effect gives you here. I'm going to bump the duration down to like 0.5 because that's, uh, you know, shutters are fast. So something like that. And this looks better on the home screen, but it's working just fine inside of here. So now that we have all that, we're seeing how all these number global variables uh, do help us. I'm going to bump the speed up a little bit. Let's see here. Um, maybe not that much. Let me, let me actually keep it around. What was 40 doing? Let's check that out one more time. Okay, 40 kind of keeps them touching. And I'm going to leave that like that for right now because what this is going to do, once you get the size that you want, I'm going to come and I'm going to add a shape. And this shape is going to be a circle. I'm going to position this circle in the center of the screen. We're working on our clip now. And I'm going to bump this up right about there. So this is what we're going to see right here in a second. Now I'm going to set this paint to something semi-transparent. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to FX, we're going to go to Mask, and we're going to go to Clip All. Now right now it didn't do anything because uh, I don't have anything beneath this shape circle. But if I come up here and slide that clip, and I'm going to call this thing Clip. Notice it's starting to clip. Now this is where the advanced editor does look a little bit jacked up, but we're, we're going to fix it. I can't help what the advanced editor shows. But I'm going to go ahead and call this shape. Uh, this is the clip. So we'll call it clip shape. And if we save this and we go back to the home screen, now what we're going to do is we're not going to see uh, anything outside. Remember how we saw the triangles bouncing out and stuff? Now we don't see them. So this is when it closes. This is when it opens. Now what we can come in here and do is we probably need to make the clip a little bit smaller because we can see some of that stuff. So if you notice, clip showing, clip not showing is not changing anything because I have not linked that to my clip yet. So let's make the clip, again, I said I want to make that a little bit smaller, something like that, maybe 380. And if I go over to FX and I come in here to the mask and I put a little code inside of here. So here's our code. If, uh, what was it, show clip. Yeah, so if GV show clip, I've got to put a parenthesis there. So if show clip is on, then therefore we want to say, uh, I mean, it depends on, <laughs> do you want, okay, when, when clip is showing, that means we're going to actually show the circle. Uh, so I probably need to change the way I got this worded. But we want to do, so if it's on, we want to do clip. Let me see how to type this correctly. I'm going to come click right here. I want to do clip underscore all. So right there, clip underscore all. Otherwise, none. And this should be good to go. 
So right now, uh, since clip's not showing, um, it's not going to do the clip, but if I do this, this should cut the clip on because that's that code that I have here. So if show clip is on, we want to clip everything. Otherwise, we don't want to, and that's going to show that semi-transparent circle that I have applied back over here. Remember that paint, the paint item there? We had it semi-transparent. So uh, what else do we need to do? Um, to clean this up a little bit more, I'll tell you what, let's save this. Let's go back to the home screen. And now our clip showing, so clip not showing, that means we don't have our clip applied. So maybe it should be saying so clip, clip not applied. That would be a better word to use there. Um, I'll tell you, how do you fix that? Well, let me show you for those of you who are just getting into KOWP, if I go to my clip button, and instead of using the words clip showing, um, let's just say clip applied. That way, you know, because you can get a little mixed up. Showing, not showing, what are you talking about? So let's just use the words applied. So check that, save it, go back to the home screen. So clip applied means we should not be seeing anything on the outside of that circle. And as you can see, that's exactly what we got going on. Now, if clip is not applied, that means we should be seeing everything on the outside of this stuff. And as you can see, that's exactly what we got going on here. So if I come back and apply my clip, I want to put a ring around uh, this circle so that we can uh, maybe see like a little circle for our camera shutter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, um, what was the size of that circle? Around 380, I'm going to create another circle. And what I want to have to do with this circle though, which is a square right now, I need to slide it above my clip shape. So I'm going to put it right there. That way it's not going to fall inside of that clip. And I'm going to make this a circle. And I need to put this in the center of the screen. And make it size around 380. And then I'm also going to come to its paint. And I'm just going to apply a stroke. Now you can do a gradient here if you'd like, and I'm going to make it up to about 10. So let's see what that looks like. So now what we should have going on is now we have this ring that is sitting inside of, and as you can see, that is working quite nicely. So it's kind of looks like it's sitting inside of here. You know, if I come back and do my clip, now you can see all the triangles, but uh, everything, once we apply that clip, it's going to be hiding them unless we're inside of this circle. Something else with OLAP, OLAP is on because the triangles are overlapping as they animate. If I cut OLAP off, now we're going to see a different type of animation. That is a totally different type of animation that we have going on here, as you can see there versus this right here. And there you have it. That's how you can create uh, two different shutter animations for cameras. Um, we also looked uh, quite a bit at number global variables, on off switches, and how we can link these different things together to get the effect that we want. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.